welcome to The Wummy Bello Show. Every episode, I'll be bringing you unfiltered stories from old and new friends who've given me access into their most vulnerable and life-changing moments. Each conversation will take you on a therapeutic journey with laughter and refreshing relatability. I think I've, like a lot of us, like I've watched your journey from the jump and I said, although you're 26, it feels like you're so much older. And I don't say so much older to be dramatic, but genuinely, it really, if you would tell me, yeah, I'm 29, I wouldn't be like, I'll be like, oh my gosh, because you don't look that. But I would be, I wouldn't also be like, oh my gosh, because it feels like that just because of how long and how extensive like your presence online has been. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because you came onto the online game at a very young age. Very, very young age. Very, very young age, right? Yeah. Before we even like tap into you even coming online, I wanted to kind of even strip that a little bit and just ask you, if like I'm sitting there here in front of you right now in the way that I am, and I'll say to you, thinking back to Jade as a child, um, if there is one moment that you can that you can identify to me directly reflects what the the child like Jade is like, what would that moment be? I feel I don't know. I feel like I've been the same forever. Mm. I've always been the same girl Mm. I don't know if there's one specific point where I'm like yeah that's still that's still me I feel I don't know your eyes are telling me that you want to say more no I swear I swear no I swear sure (laughs) there's not one specific point that I can think of Mm. maybe maybe like Ask the question again. Okay, so like in a different did, way. Okay, so if we, if I, okay, so if someone says to me, Wumi, think back to one moment in your childhood that you would say probably solidify, you know, Wumi now and like who you are now, what would that moment be? I'll probably say when I went to decide to tell my mum that I wanted to move schools because I didn't tell her why, but in my head it was that I wanted to transform my the perception that people had of me and I wanted to become like this version of me. That was what, that's what I would identify as like a pivotal moment for me. So if I, if I was to ask you that same moment in your childhood, what would that moment be for you? Like my mod, my, I started modeling mm. and, and things like that. I'd say that's always been the same. Mm. What age you start modeling? I started modeling at 13. What made you get into that? I mean, I feel like that makes sense to be fair because you've got the face, you've got the physique for it and everything else. But what Thank made you, you like um, tap into that? I always wanted to be known, actually. Mm -hmm. And I always knew that I wasn't the most academic Mm -hmm. person in the world. So I'm like, what am I good at? And it was modeling, dancing, Mm. acting, and a little bit of singing. Mm. Um, But modeling seemed like the easiest route to get into, especially coming from I don't know. It seemed like with when you were getting out into acting, it was like you had to go to acting school and oh, stuff. Okay. Like, we didn't have money for that. Yeah. So it seemed like modelling was just the easiest way. I get you. So you grew up in Bedford, right? And you obviously moved to London at a later point in your career. Which I moved which to London gonna, at 20. We're going to get into that, right? But thinking back to like you in Bedford and like just your overall family dynamic, what was that like for you? What was that chapter like in your life? So at home mm. was... Uh, my mom, yeah. my stepdad, um, my older sister, Lydia, myself, and my little brother, mm. Vassel. Mm-hmm. And also my dog, Kashmir. She's gone now. Rest in peace, babe. Love you. But <laughs> my dog, too. Yeah. Um, and growing up at home, I've, I don't, I've never actually spoken about this. Go on. Tell me. Talk to me. <laughs> um... I, I came from love, like, uh, you know, it was loving yeah. and, but there was a lot of arguments mm. and a lot of fights and a lot of things that us as kids should not really have seen. Yeah. Um, my stepdad struggled a lot with alcohol and he was such a lovely person, sober, mm. and then he would get drunk and it would be a different story. Yeah. So that wasn't, I feel shaky, why am I yeah. shaky? I guess because you've never spoken. Do you know what? And I think the reason why I've I never spoken you, about this. I feel like you've mentioned it. There was a video that you did um, maybe like t- in 2019 that I was watching 
um, I remember back then. And you had said that, you know, your family dynamic at home, although it was like, you know, it was full of love. There were still a lot of things that changed you and like that didn't really make your childhood like the best experience. Mm. So this is that, I assume, right? Yeah. And what was having, having, having that kind of um, father figure, you know, around, how did that affect you growing up? Um, do you know what? I thought the world of him, mm. like, cause he was in my life since I was two years old. Oh. Um, so absolutely thought the world of him and I called him dad for years, years and years and years. I was actually a little bit afraid of my own dad. Not that my dad was yeah. a horrible person or whatever, but I knew my stepdad more than I knew mm. my real dad. Cause my dad, <laughs> he's such a great person and we're so alike, but he, spent a lot of his years being a party boy. My dad's a DJ. Oh, okay. Um, so, you know, he was out here doing whatever. Yeah. And um, so I, I saw my stepdad more as a dad to me. Yeah. And oh, it's hard to speak about because do you know what it is? It's there's so many people involved in the situation. Yeah. And it's like, you never want to make anybody else feel uncomfortable even though it's my story it's other people's story as well but yeah. i'm gonna just speak from my experience. point of view and yeah. my experience because it is it was part of my life as well but it was shit yeah. can i swear yeah of course it was shit yeah. um and it warped my perception of like what love was and and things like that mm. in what way how did it shape your perception of love because I didn't really see it. Mm. I didn't really see much love. Like I didn't see affection or, I, it just wasn't, it mm. was just a lot of fighting. Mm. It how wasn't did, normal. How did that change? I'm just trying to think back to imagine you as like a child and you're kind of seeing your mum, you know, experiencing that. How did that change your relationship with your mum, if anything? We were really, okay, so we were very, very close, still are really, really close. Yeah. Um, and it felt like it was like me, my mum, my brother. Cause at one, at some point my sister, my older sister left home yeah. and you know, had a baby and mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. Before, before she left home, she would sort of take on that role of looking after me and Vassell when the fighting was going on and like she'd keep us in her room and like try and sort them out downstairs or whatever. But when she left it, that be that role became Came mine. Roles, yeah. Um, I'm like thinking, sorry. I, I have, I'm like thinking about the situation as, as well as Do you feel as like talking. you haven't had a moment to like think about it as much? It's, it was unexpected. Okay. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never, I didn't know when I would speak about this ever. Mm. I didn't know if I would ever speak about yeah. speak about it. Mm -hmm. I feel like it really did shift you then, because I feel like you're you seem like even just your facial expression and just like how you're talking about it, like the stop starts and stuff. I feel like it really. I try did, not like, to cry. Yeah, That's it really, what I'm, it feels I'm like trying it, not to cry. I can tell. It feels like it really, really did affect you. What would you say if you could, if you had a moment to kind of like tap into, you know, Jade in that moment or in in the house at that point when she was experiencing all this and seeing all these things, what, what would you say to the Jade now with the knowledge that you have and the experience of life that you've had now? Funny you say this, but I've actually had to do that before in a hypnotherapy session. I had to go back to like my younger self and like comfort my younger self in that situation. Mm. I don't know what I would really say to her because to be honest with you, it's not a situation that I should have been in or yeah. should have seen or anything like that. Like yeah. I could obviously, I know that things get better now and you know, things have worked out fine now, yeah. but would I be able to tell my younger self that at the time I wouldn't have believed that it was going to like be fine. Mm. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I would just tell her maybe like it would, it does get better. Mm -hmm. But when you're in that, you can't see that it's mm. going to get better. Mm. It just seems to just get worse and then it gets better. And have those emotions kind of shifted from you now a little bit more? Or do you feel like a part of you still kind of holds on to them and you almost can't, it, or you still, or you, do you still feel like you're still in a place where you're still trying to get over? Not necessarily get over because I don't think that's the right um, term, not th that's the right phrase, but almost just like shift yourself from still holding on to them and kind of just allowing yourself to just live without. Um, I, I don't hold on to it anymore. Yeah. 
I feel like I've done a lot of hypnotherapy and just therapy in general mm. to get over that situation. Yeah. Um, I feel like before, a few years ago, it probably affected relationships and and like your relationships with people. Yeah. In what way? Um, like your adult relationship, I'm assuming, right? Or just, just yeah. yeah. Like not knowing what love was mm. because I don't, I hadn't seen a really positive example example of love. Yeah. So I guess it affected that a lot, mm. but I, not not anymore. Mm. I've worked a lot on that. Yeah. Um, and I guess that's what therapy, that's what therapy is for. Is that something that you ever, cause I can, I think especially as a child, right? Um, although you have siblings and you know, people who are also in the same household as you, in a lot of ways that, you know, these experiences can make you feel really alone because it feels like it's only you that's experiencing what you're seeing. Especially when you, when your sister left, your older sister left and you had to now take on the responsibility of being the older one and having to protect your younger sister or your un- younger brother. Mm. And you, do you know what I mean? From everything that's kind of going on at home. At, in moments when everything was kind of going on in that household at that time, did you feel alone or did you feel like you still had your mum to kind of extend, you know, what you were feeling to, with or even your brother? Um, I feel like I definitely felt alone. Um, but we was, it was still like us together. Like a lot of the time it was like us in my room, like chilling together and stuff. Yeah. So there were times where I felt alone. And I think I felt alone because I would go to school and not like tell anyone about mm. it. Like I wouldn't, it was like a, it was just between the family, mm. what was happening. And that's what made me feel lonely. But I didn't feel. Cause you couldn't share it with the world. Yeah, it's not that I couldn't share it. It's that I felt uncomfortable sharing it at school because I mean, my school experience wasn't great anyway. Yeah. So it's like, I'm not gonna go to school and now tell oh. these people. Because I know that you've also mentioned that like in school, like you were you were bullied and like there was a lot going on in school and also like you growing up in Bedford, which is like a really small minded, well, in your words, like a really small minded area you mm. know, where people don't, aren't, aren't very inviting for you to like try new things and stuff. But then you also have, you know, you're in a home environment that doesn't really allow you to do much other than just experience that like, kind of what's, you know, going on. So it kind of felt like there was no room for- There was no escape. Yeah, like- There was no escape. How did you handle that? Um. Did you handle that? No, I actually self-harmed a lot. <laughs> yeah. At which age was this? 14, 15. Did anyone know this? Not for a while, oh no. Gosh. I didn't tell my mum for years. I, I didn't tell my dad like what was going on at home till I was like, I don't know, maybe pregnant with Ayla. Like, I, didn't, I just didn't, but yeah, I, yeah. I would self-harm. I'd and at what point? Cut. At what point did this stop for you? Um, it stopped when I'd done counselling at school. Mm. I did some counselling at school. Yeah. But I, I couldn't even be like 100% honest with the counsellor because mm. she didn't really necessarily know that I was doing that to myself because it, she, the first time I met her, she was like, look, this is all confidential. You can tell me anything. Mm, mm. But if I feel like you are in danger, I would have to tell your family. So I'm mm. not going to tell this woman that I'm cutting myself and I'm suicidal. Like, I don't need to tell my family that. Mm. So I just didn't say anything. What was, I just want to go back a little bit and, mm. I, and I hope that it's like a healthy period to do so because I feel like you're in a, such a different space. Yeah, I am. Um, it's fine. So I feel comfortable to ask you this, but I'm thinking by the that, way, if I'm stopping yeah. it, it's just I'm really trying no. <laughs> not to cry because yeah. I'm not trying to cry when I've just got here. Yeah. <laughs> when it's just died, yeah. do you know what I mean? So yeah, but go ahead, go. No, I'm happy you mentioned that because I feel like I wouldn't ever want to like ask you a question that like feels a little bit tri- too triggering. But I do think that it's sick that like you're at a point where you're able to speak so comfortably about you know this comfortably, comfortably to some extent you know about this. You yeah. Know? But if we could like think back to you know Jade in at that point in life um, where it felt like there was no escape, there was no room to kind of grow in a way because I feel like you just kind of feel a little bit incubated and you know what I mean alone what were the moments that made you feel like this is th- th- life is worth it that th- things are worth it let me not go all the way because you said you were suicidal but I felt what, what were suicidal. what were the moments that kind of kept you alive I felt something in me that one day something's gonna something's gonna happen for me mm. I don't know what it was mm. I don't know if it's the Leo in me <laughs> I am a star sign believer, okay? But I don't know if it was that, but I felt something in me that was like, 
you're you're gonna do something one day. Mm. I just believed, mm. and I don't know why, because I had a lot of reasons to not believe in myself. Mm-hmm. But I just believe that somehow, some way, life is gonna get better, and I'm gonna be something, and I'm gonna do something. And then you found YouTube. And then I found YouTube at thirteen. Was it thirteen or a bit younger? Yeah, I found beauty gurus. Mm-hmm. Beauty gurus mm-hmm. at thirteen, twelve, thirteen. And what did finding that kind of space? Because I think you've you've spoken. This is me completely like watching every single video that you put out basically. <laughs> but I think um, there's like a, there's a certain spark in your eyes when you talk about the moments or the period in your life when you found beauty gurus because it felt like that was the moment or even just YouTube and beauty gurus, that was the moment in your life where it felt like you finally had like a breath of like fresh air or a breath of where it, it, you were allowed to kind of just be yourself and, you know, kind of just completely completely air out all the other external noises whether it's in the house or in school so talk to me about you know the point in your life when you did find youtube and the beauty gurus and what that did for you it was everything to me like legit everything to me i would like go home and just watch these beauty videos the first person i came across was this woman called michelle farn she's like an og in this like she i feel like she was like the first one to do it i'm sure of it Um, But yeah, I found her. I've always been somebody that's into beauty and I was always that girl that, I don't know, I'd pick up a magazine and I would read something in the magazine like, oh yeah, take an avocado and mash it up, put it in your face and it's a face mask. (laughs) Would I be able to do that? No, because my mum would be like, why are you wasting food? Mm. Don't put that on your face. Mm. But I was that person that would read it and be like, oh, that sounds good. I'd love to do that. Um, I was a very girly girl that was into all things makeup and beauty and I would steal my mum's makeup even though it wasn't Mm. my shade or anything like that but I just wanted to you know learn um but it did definitely take me that was an escape for me I'd say like yeah home was an escape school was an escape I didn't really have any like outside hobbies or anything like that Mm -hmm. so I would say that was my escape Mm -hmm. maybe that was what kept me going maybe was it like seeing would if you were to think back now anyway was it seeing those beauty gurus and the where they took their career and what they were able to do with their lives that kind of almost made you, you know what you're talking about you know I felt like I was going to do something I felt like yeah. I, I had there was more to give would you say like seeing that was almost like your 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 awakening to what life could be like or can be like if you just remained here no not really because I actually didn't know they had a career I thought okay. they were just hobbying life <laughs> Like, I swear, I didn't know they were making money yeah. or they were, I thought they were getting free product and mm. that was that. And I thought maybe they have spare money for really nice things because they're not having to spend it on mm. beauty stuff because they're being sent it. That was my thought process. Um, yeah, I was, I was wrong about that. Mm-hmm. But no, I, di- I, I didn't really... I didn't even really look at their views or how big they were or how many subscribers they had or anything like that. It was, if I clicked on a video and I enjoyed it, I watched it and then I'd go down the recommended thing and I saw that looks like a good video and that Mm. looks like a good video. I didn't really look at who was popping Mm. or what views they had. Mm. I just, it was just just whether I enjoyed their videos. Yeah, so I don't really think that that was it because if anything, I wanted to model. Still Not really point. like, yeah, still at that point. Mm. So you, okay, so I know that there was a point where you had like created the YouTube video and then you, you put out a YouTube video, but then you ended up deleting it quite I, early on. Yeah, I put, the channel, right? few, I put out a few videos. Mm. I took, I took the channel down because people at school found out. And just what was, very nice. I actually want to go back to school if you don't, if <laughs> yeah, you're go open on. to, but like, what, what, what was the school experience? Like, what was it, is it more so because of Bedford and like the mindset of the people in Bedford or was it something that happened? Obviously there's no reason that there's nothing can ever validate bullying, Yeah, you know, but what sparked it? in school for you? I actually don't know. Mm. It it was, people would talk about how skinny I am and just, oh, you're anorexic, you need to eat, oh, like, go have a burger, like, just comments like Mm. that. And it was like, one person would hear somebody else say that and then it would let, it would always give them permission to, Mm do it too, and mm-hmm. just like one person would do it, then two, then three, then four, that it just became like a thing. Okay. And even complete strangers would do it as well. Complete strangers that I didn't go to school with, I could be like in Bedford Town Centre and walk past a group of people and they'll 
be like, look how skinny that girl is and like laugh. It was like a thing. I don't know. How did you deal with that? Um, like what was your, what was your coping mechanism? Like, cause I can imagine like, I don't, I don't, there were, in like a lot of the things that you spoke about, there was no moment of like, oh, I had a friend who kind of, you know, supported me and we kind of just did this together or anything like that. So what was, what was your coping mechanism with that? Considering that you had all the other stuff that was like, you know, going on at home as well. I don't know. And when I think back, I must have been like riddled with anxiety actually, but not yeah, knowing actually yeah, what it imagine. was. But I remember like just feeling a lot of things and feeling um, nervous to go past people or I just didn't want to go to school. Mm. And, and my attendance was real bad, real bad, because I just didn't want to go in because- yeah. Why would you? Yeah, why would I? Let's talk about Jade kind of stepping into the spotlight because it kind of felt like, for me anyway, it came out of nowhere and I was like, oh, Jade Pierce. And it just became this online thing. I think, like I said in, in the earlier part of our conversation that, you know, when you came online, it felt like online was still very new yeah. at that point, especially at the when you were like really, really, really growing. It felt like the online space was like, you know, very new. Considering how new the space was, how did you kind of navigate your way through it? And did you also know what putting yourself out there meant for you? I didn't know what putting myself out there meant for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I obviously shut down the first channel when I was 13 and obviously the bullying happened. But mm-hmm. then I joined Instagram and people just would ask me how I do my hair and how I do my makeup. And mm-hmm. that was what made me want to join back on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Cause I couldn't type to everyone. I couldn't reply to yeah. everyone. So I was just like, let me show you. Do you know what the impression, the impression I get from, you know, kind of watching you back then, it just felt like quite innate and like, it not still a hobby. Like it, it was yeah, still do you know what I mean? Like it wasn't like, oh yeah, like I'm about to kill this ish. You no, know what I mean? Like never, it just never, felt never. like I'm just here and I'm I just doing my thing. I genuinely had no idea what it would do for me. Mm. I just wanted, it was just like for the people that wants to know, here it is. Mm. But I didn't, I actually didn't even like deep the views that I was getting or, mm. or anything. I, I was just in a world of my own just... I felt like I was just doing what I wanted to do. I was yeah. just posting for me. And if you like it, you mm-hmm. like it. And I actually have that same mentality now. I'm just doing what I want to do. And if you fuck with it, you fuck with it. If you don't, then I can't help you. Was there a moment where you noticed though? You know, Because I feel like there might've been a moment where you were like, oh wait, something's happening here. Things are moving, things are growing, things. When oh. I started getting people email me like, how much do you charge for, this, for a post? Mm. I was like, charge? Mm. <laughs> What's what? that? <laughs> I said, like, my first deal, I charged them £25. No. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. For an Instagram and post. I genuinely no thought way. I made bank. Like, I was like, they paid me £25. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I swear to God. What? So was yeah. it like a big brand or just like normal? No, it was like a random, um, it was like an eyelash growth yeah, yeah, yeah. serum brand. I don't, I don't, I wouldn't even know who they are and or if they're still a company now. It was that long ago, but yeah. How, how did your family even react to like you kind of occupying like the online space? What was that like for them? Especially like, I feel like your mum more so. My mum was hell, like hella proud. Really? Yeah, hella proud of me. Did she understand what that, that space meant? I think so. Mm. Because my mum kind of taps into that world anyway. Yeah. Like she, she's on Instagram, she has a Twitter, she has TikTok, like she, she taps in. Mm. I mean, I made all her accounts, but. <laughs> She taps into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, So she um, gets it. Yeah, she, she definitely gets it for sure. She would take all my pictures and stuff. What, early on or still till today? So? Stefan takes most of my pictures now. My mum doesn't really take the pictures anymore, but earlier on, that was all mum. So you moved to London at 20, mm-hmm. because obviously now your career is growing, you're thriving, you know, it's time to move to London. Firstly, let's kind of talk about even moving to London, coming from Bedfordshire. Obviously, I know that um, your your community, like in Bedfordshire, they weren't, am I saying it right? Is it Bedford? I'm yeah, Bedford. Be- Bedford. Yeah. Your community in Bedford, they weren't very like welcoming to, you know, you tapping into like the online space and like doing things a little bit differently, mm-hmm. right? Um, what was the, the thought process of you moving to London at 20? Because I know, I, I like I moved out at 19 and I know that was a massive deal, especially the way that I did it. So what was it like for you moving to London and how did that even come about? Um, it came about, truthfully, mum, I really hope you don't mind me saying this, babe. Um, <laughs> but when my mum finally left my stepdad, yeah. she just wasn't herself. She, she was going through a lot. She had been with him for over 20 years. So it was a very long time they were together. And 
when they finally split up, she just was a very angry person. And I think because she was so used to arguing with somebody, she would just try and pick a fight with me. And it, it, it didn't go down very well because I, I, I will argue back, I will. So, but at the same time, you're my mom and I really love you and I respect you at the same time. Um, so like, there was a few times we had an argument and mm-hmm. she was sort of just like, oh, just get out or whatever. So I did and I was sort of staying at, you know, people's places or whatever. Mm-hmm. And there was this one particular time where she, she just told me to get out one too many times. Get out of the house. Yeah, and I was just like, I'm gonna actually like leave. Mm. Uh, so I planned to actually get a place in Bedford. I tried to get a flat in Bedford, but they would not accept, they wouldn't accept it for yeah. some reason. Yeah. I don't know why I didn't have enough um, like tax returns and yeah. things like that. And then I looked in London, they literally accepted me straight away. So I was baffled because the rent in London is That's like more. a lot more than Bedford. Yeah. So, so yeah, that was, yeah, that's why I moved. How does she take that? Like you just moving in general? She weren't happy about it. Did that change your relationship with her? Like after you moved into London? Getting pregnant with Ada changed my relationship with her. Talk to me about that. We weren't, we were still not talking, me and my mum when I moved and it was a really, really hard time for me because we were so close, best friends, mm. still are now. Like it was baffling yeah. to me how we had got to this point. Cause it was like, you are my best friend why are we in this position? Like, I just wanted her to just feel happier so mm. that we could just get back to being best friends. Mm. But she was just still angry and all of that. And then I got, when I moved to London, I got pregnant three months later. So. Oh my gosh, it, oh, it was three months, it was only three months later? Damn, sorry, I really just thought it was like a year or No, so. it was three months later. Like, it all happened mad fast. And obviously she wasn't planned or anything like mm. that. Like I was supposed to be living my best London life. Yeah. Like, what do you mean? Yeah. And you know, but you know, I got pregnant or mm. whatever. I took on my responsibilities, um, but I called my mum mm. and I was like, mum, I'm pregnant. Yeah. And I'm not gonna lie. She wasn't pleased because I didn't know what to do. I didn't know if I- She wasn't pleased that you didn't know what to do or she wasn't- She, she wasn't pleased because I didn't know what to do whether, okay, it's a bit of a touchy subject, but yeah. was I going to keep the baby? Yeah. Was I not going to yeah. keep the baby? Um, because I actually never thought I'd have kids. I didn't see myself having kids. Mm-hmm. So it was like a big one for me. Where I'm just like, what do I do? She wasn't happy that I was now in a position where I'm having to choose what I'm doing. Mm. She would rather me decide what it is that I want to do. Yeah, without having to choose. be in that yeah, position, yeah, yeah. do you yeah. know what I mean? Um, but once I made my decision, she was happy. She just wanted to know like how she was going to support me, mm-hmm. whether I was going to keep the baby or not. That's what she wanted to, to know. How was making that decision for you? Making that decision. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> you know, I, well, I weighed up my pros and cons. Mm-hmm. A lot of my reasonings to, a lot of my reasons to not keep her was a lot of selfish reasons. Mm. Like I wouldn't be able to be spontaneous anymore. I wouldn't because uh, I'm a very spontaneous person, mm-hmm. so I wouldn't be able to be spontaneous anymore. Mm-hmm. That was like kind of the main thing. Mm-hmm. Like, am I gonna be able to, and also my career, I was yeah. worried about my career. I worried that brands wouldn't take me seriously anymore. Yeah. And I actually reached out to a few brands, a lot of brands, and I said to them, look, I'm pregnant mm-hmm. and I, I'm i just dying to know, like, will this affect my career? Because I have just started this career mm-hmm. and I've never wanted to have a baby if I'm not, making good money i always if i if i was going to have a child which i didn't see myself having one but if i was i wanted to do it with money yeah so um yeah they got back to me and they just congratulated me and was just like this won't affect a thing at all was that quite a big deciding factor for you then um just kind of hearing them it helped it did help like it reassured me to know that okay i can have a i can have my baby yeah and i can still work on my career Mm. Um, because I really didn't want to sacrifice the, I didn't want to sacrifice either of them. I didn't want to sacrifice uh, my career and just be a mother, but I also didn't just want to be a mother and 
Sacri- Wait, did I say that right? I didn't want to sacrifice my career and just be a mother. And then you also didn't want to be a mother and sacrifice your career. Yeah. Yeah. I but that. I didn't want to sacri- I didn't want to like just do my career and like I don't know. It's, it's hard to yeah, explain. I get you. You just didn't. You just. I just wanted to, to remain do both. you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Through it all. Yeah. I think, and I think that kind of segues me well, really well to what I wanted to talk to you about because I think you know your pregnancy part of your life that it really did feel like there was like a shift um, in like your online presence, and I think you spoke you know well fairly openly I feel like you'll probably see more openly about it today hopefully <laughs> um but you know just about how that affected you how the, the pregnancy or was it the I think it was a combination it was like the pregnancy and then like after birth how it affected you mentally and also how it affected your eating disorder so kind of if let's let, let's kind of dive into that because I think it, it was such an important part of your journey and it's still something that I think you advocate for quite heavily like mm. just mental health and you know just speaking openly just about what you're going through mm-hmm. so walk me through that 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 change in your life um what should we start with what part whatever should we start whatever with? comes first to you because w- do you know what let's actually start from the point where that what w- well, the first thing was so you're pregnant what was affected first and then was it the, the, okay. the eating because i think sometimes it's, it's hard so to with, kind of understand so with my eating i've always struggled with it yeah obviously i got bullied for being Not, thin yeah, 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 and things yeah. like that so i've yeah. always struggled with my eating but it's something that sort of just ran in the family mm. Where my mum was always petite, my dad, you know, sometimes he's got a bit of a beer belly, mm. but overall, he's like a slender man. Yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, I was bound to be small. Yeah. So I've always struggled with it, but I didn't have, like, an eating issue. Yeah. Like, I was always naturally petite. Yeah. But I wasn't not eating. Mm-mm, okay. But then when I got pregnant, I... <laughs> so... When I got pregnant, at first, when I didn't know I was pregnant, mm-hmm. for the first, like, I guess, week of pregnancy, I was really hungry all the time, but just felt really, really sick all the time as well. But I was really hungry all the time. And I was like, well, this is weird because I, I've, before that, I was really struggling with my eating because me and my mum hadn't been talking and stuff. Yeah. So I was struggling anyway. Yeah. Um, then got pregnant ate a lot then I did the pregnancy test found out I was pregnant and then literally from then I could not keep anything down it was the weirdest thing like when I got to like two three weeks pregnant I just couldn't eat the nausea was insane it was like far too much I'd be sick all the time it just wasn't a good time Mm. Um, and mentally it affected me beyond belief I was just so depressed so depressed if you can think back to like those those moments what did that if you can describe it because i think depression is one of those things that you know people experience i've experienced it i know you've experienced it and the great thing about you is that you speak quite openly about Mm. your experience right how would you describe or if you could go back to think back into those moments where you know the the depression was at its peak how would you describe it what what was that version of jade like what does she do what does she not do what does she tap into what does she not tap into I was literally, I was not myself, very angry. I even didn't listen to music. And that's like a thing for me. Like I know that I'm depressed if I'm not listening to music because I love music. Yeah. I love to sing. I love how it makes my body feel. Mm. So when I know I'm de- getting depressed if I'm not listening mm. to music. So yeah, that was definitely one thing. Uh, I'm like trying to think back to that time. Mm. I just didn't want to get out of bed. I don't know. I just felt very unhappy. Mm. Was but it quite- not because I was pregnant. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's because you, what you felt was because going on with your... Because of what I felt. Yeah. Yeah. And what was it? Because you, when you're public, right, and I can get this, like when you're online and, you know, you almost have to, like, show up and show out and stuff and you don't have that innately like in you what is that like because i feel like that even adds like an extra layer of pressure because whereas like if you're if you've got kind of like a normal job and no one has any expectations of you you as a person yeah it's cool whereas like when your whole life and your whole way of making money is all about you being this person and you sharing your life you sharing this how how does that affect you and how does that heighten the, the, the depression further if it does? I didn't really go out. Mm. I just stopped going to events and stuff because I kind of couldn't. Mm. Because how do I explain that mm-hmm. I'm like being sick and stuff? It's either like, well, you're 
you're really ill and you shouldn't be here in case you pass someone else abroad yeah. or you're pregnant. Yeah. I don't know. Um, so I didn't. I just didn't really go out anymore. Um, I only really started going to events once I announced it, and I announced at six months. So, and I, I, I wish I kept it the whole way. Actually, what you've wished you didn't say anything. I wish way. I never really announced because I got a lot of hate. Yeah, yeah. What was the, I don't actually remember that period. You know, like I don't remember the the hate. I got a lot of. Um, you're gonna be a single mum, like blah, blah blah blah. I mean, granted, you was right, but. <laughs> Is that what people were saying? Yeah, really? and um, like a lot of comments what on my heck? bump. Yeah. A lot of like, that bump's way too small. Like the baby's definitely gonna die, things like that. And she nearly did. So it, it, I, it, was, such a, it was such a weird time of my life. I didn't know people were saying. People I know, were saying I knew it was bad There online. was even one time yeah, yeah. where there was a meme. Yeah. And it was like a photo of me in, in the mirror mm. And I had my bump. Is that the white bathing suit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the one. Yeah. So I had that on, and then someone made a meme, and it said, "She's single, pregnant, and horny. What Mm. are you doing with her?" And men were just commenting. I'm. I can't. I don't even think it's safe for YouTube. I swear. But men were commenting the most disgusting things ever. Like I can't even begin to tell you how disgusting them comments were and i remember going on snapchat and crying my eyes out and being like please report this um post or account or whatever Mm. it got taken down in the end so people wrote out for me i appreciate that um but yeah just a a lot of things like that i just really wish i didn't announce it's interesting because as much as you say that you still like you're still willing to like be vulnerable online yeah. It, I think even even after you gave birth to Ayla, like you were still online, you know, if it was days where you felt like your your mental health was kind of like in a bin or like you just didn't feel good about yourself, you still came online even though you knew that the online space wasn't probably like the most comfortable, like the safest space. Where did, the, where did that come from? Or do you feel like you're just like quite connected to certain people on your platform? The love outweighs the hate, yeah. always. Okay. I've got some really, really, really amazing supporters. Yeah. Like people that have watched me since the very, very start and know everything. There's yeah. pe- there's new people that have, have joined now. I feel like I've been lucky to, to have people that understand me or try to understand me. I have a lot of pe- like-minded people that follow me. Mm. Um, and I, think I feel, I I feel that a lot on your Snapchat. That. I always say this, like I feel like even with the, the, kind of, the kind of questions that people ask you on Snapchat, it really does feel like a lot of your followers feel very close to like who you are and what you represent. I feel very close to people on Snapchat as well. Yeah. I don't know what it is about that platform, but people are just so... Real. Yeah, they're real. They're, they're different. Real. They. I feel like I'm allowed to be who I want to be or not yeah. who I want to be, who I am. Yeah without the so stuff. much judgment. Mm-hmm. And you know what's brilliant as well? The fact that on Snapchat, you can post and people can reply to you and stuff, mm-hmm. but you're the only one that can see those people's replies. Whereas on Instagram, you post something and you get comments or whatever, and people will comment something. Yeah. And so many people have seen it, yeah. giving people the opportunity to like that yeah, comment yeah, and yeah, things yeah, yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. And then giving people um a reason to add more hate to that because somebody else did first or something i feel like it's that it feels very controlled Mm. and it feels for the creator it doesn't feel like it's against the creator and i appreciate that whereas like a platform maybe say like instagram kind of feels a little bit more like open to anybody's criticism, judgment. It feels like, Everything feels yeah, so it, it's just not how it used it's to so be. Exposed. And I struggle with that. Till now. I struggle with Instagram because it's like, I don't know what to do or what to mm. say or who, without without someone saying something. Yeah. You said that though. I think you, you there was a video you did not too long ago and um, you were talking about, and I think so many creators feel this, where you're like, what version of myself do I show I on all these, like, I am, I'm Jade who's fun, Jade who's this, da 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 Like, what version of myself do you want to see or do I want to show? Do you feel like you've kind of, you're better navigating that? 
Yeah, now I am. Yeah. I feel like before I wasn't, I was going through a shift in myself mm. where like almost like an identity problem. Like I didn't know mm. what to do, who to be, because it felt like no matter what I did, someone had a problem with it, which led me to then believe that I then had to like change that about myself. Mm, mm. And then it was just coming to a point where I'm like, I actually like, I don't, I don't even know this version of myself. Like I'm warping myself for you to be somebody else for some, and it made me unhappy. Like yeah. who even am I? So yeah, I had to drop that shit all the way out. Like, fuck that. I, do you know what? Okay, right. So I think you've obviously experienced a lot of like online, the good and the bad. You've experienced the bad to the core of it. You've experienced the good and to the core of that too, right? Yeah. So I wanted to kind of segue the conversation to a point. I know we've kind of spoken off camera about this and <laughs> how we wanted to like, I guess just navigate the conversation. And you know, for me, it's about giving you the free range to completely control your narrative because it's your story. Yeah. But I also do think that this is such a, it's such an, it, it, it's so real life that I think that some people are so, I don't know how to, t how to phrase this. People just some, sometimes just don't want to believe that real life really does happen, you know? And that's what, when I first saw what kind of, when I explain this more, you'll understand what I'm talking about. But when I first <laughs> saw everything that kind of took place, my first impression was, this is so real life. And I can, I, as in the human who experiences life, who experiences love, who experiences people can understand how you can go from here so you can go from here. And just to clarify that for, you know, anyone who doesn't know what I'm talking about, obviously you shared a lot of your relationship with your, with the father of your daughter, Ayla, gorgeous daughter mm -hmm. Ayla, with us, you know, where you, sh you sh he was on your YouTube, he was on your Instagram, like it was very open, like it was, it was organic, you know, there was nothing forced about it. But then I don't really know how it happened, so you can correct me here, but it kind of, there was a moment where there was like a, a, a shift at some point where, he was no longer in the picture and somebody else who was a part of his life and his friend became who Stefan, who, who now came into the picture and someone that you were now dating. Mm -hmm. And I know that that caused such a massive storm for, you know, so many people online. And I know that that was, I can imagine that it was such a pivotal point in your life because mm. on one end, it's like, do you know what? Before we even go into one end, this, that, this, that, talk to me about what actually happened, like in that situation where you were, this was, your, this was the father of your daughter and this is someone that you were dating at one point and you shared with us. And then you're now no longer dating him, but instead there's somebody else who was a part of his life and also your life mm -hmm. came into the picture. Okay. So Michael and I, we had got together. We have been together twice. So yeah. we got together for the first time. I actually don't know what, how old we were or what year it was, I was over 18. I think uh, we, uh, I was like either 18 or 19. I can't remember. Um, but we had started dating. Yeah. And then I decided to leave the relationship for my own reasons. I just didn't, I didn't want to be with him. Yeah. And then we spent some time apart or whatever. Yeah. And I had got to the point where I was just like, I do want someone that I feel like will be solid for me. Mm. That's how I felt at yeah. the time. Now, I don't know. <laughs> so younger me, yeah. the virgin, what I think is solid now is not what I thought was solid then. Yeah. So as I said to you earlier, yeah. my, what I've seen from love and stuff isn't the best, isn't the best, yeah. isn't the best thing. I thought that as long as someone is not cheating or beating you up, they're a good partner. That's That was what was in my head. And I knew he wouldn't cheat and I knew he wouldn't beat me up. So I was just like, Let, let's just let's just try it again, you know, because he, he didn't, we just ended up speaking again. And I was just like, you know what? Like, whatever, like, yeah. let's just try this again. Yeah. And then obviously we had got together. I moved to London for my career. Yeah. Um, he was already living in London, so it kind of moved quickly where he was just staying around a lot. Yeah. In the end, he was staying around so much. He was just like, here's the spare yeah, okay. key, you know? Mm -hmm. Three months later, I got pregnant. Now, before this, when we got together again for the second time, um, we were 20 years old. We Both were young. of you were 20? Yeah. Wow. Uh, that is so young. Yeah. I think he might be, um, uh, he's a little bit younger, just a few months younger than yeah. me, I think. Um, but yeah, we were both 20 and I didn't expect to get pregnant. Mm. <laughs> uh, 
in my eyes, like I'm, we were together, mm. but I'm still a young girl that's just like dating. Like, did I, did I, was I thinking in my head, like, this is the person that I'm going to be with for the rest of my life, like together forever? Mm. No. But when I got pregnant with Ayla, I wanted it to be a together forever situation because I always thought if I was going to have a kid, then it I'm going to do that. it. Yeah, yeah I'm going to yeah. do it with, I'm going to stay with the person. Yeah. Um, how crazy is that though? That that is actually how our, our brain works. That what? you know, you you get with someone. I mean, obviously, I've never been pregnant, but I can actually just imagine that thought process of like, I'm with you. Might not have the intention to like be with you forever, but now I'm pregnant. Oh my gosh, you're my person forever, bro. Like, let's make this work. We've got a daughter now. Like, you you start to become a little bit more regimented with like how you yeah you place do the relationship. You do definitely, and you know there were there were things about the relationship that i didn't necessarily like like mm. um but i was pregnant now and it was just like let's just let's just try this yeah um but as time was going on it was a thing where i was just becoming more and more unhappy and decided to really um I decided to leave the relationship when she was about 6 months old and then what happened after that point? So after that point, I found out a few things mm. that I wasn't happy about. That's the thing, like I'm not, I'm not trying to like- out, Air out anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm yeah, not like, like yeah. at the end of the day, the way I see it is, is that, you know, that's Ayla's dad. Yeah. And I'm not ever trying to, what she sees on the internet, like she's, cause she'll see stuff one day. Do yeah, you know what I mean? So course. I'm very cautious of that. Yeah. Um, but you know, there was things about the relationship that I didn't appreciate. And mm. so I, sp I split up with him and mm. moved on. Cause I feel like, the, I think the one thing I did want to say is that, you know, firstly, just acknowledge that you are in a healthy, happy relationship that clearly is making you thrive in different aspects of your life. I think you've spoken very openly about that. Even just watching you guys, you know, come in here, like you can, you can feel it. Do you know what I mean? So I think just to like even clarify that side of thing, I think everybody online who follows you especially can feel that. So I don't want you to like feel uncomfortable about like you know what I mean like kind of exploring that do you think know what it is I things have changed like, so much yeah I feel like people have made it their mission to like misunderstand the situation yeah. and I think naturally people especially like men will take the man's side yeah, because yeah, they can yeah they can put themselves yeah. in that situation I will say though like a lot of the a lot of women I felt so supported as like they could put themselves in my situation and I mm. feel like the men could put themselves in in Michael's situation sort of thing. But anyway, going back to um going back to Steph and I, it wasn't uh there was no overlap. Mm. And it's hard it's hard to say the story without like you know filling certain things in. Yeah. Um but they stopped being friends. Okay, at some point. They stopped being friends. And I guess we both realized that we had feelings for each other. They did not mm -hmm. stop being friends because, because you guys built they something. stopped being friends before we even established like, oh, I think that we kind of like each other a little bit. Yeah. Mm. That, that was the situation. Was that kind of difficult for you guys to come to terms with? Because as much as like, they weren't friends anymore and you were no longer with him, the love that, or like the memory of, you know, your relationship with him and also his relationship with him would have still been there. And I think that I can imagine that can cause like a little bit of a confusion on like both parts as to like how to best best move forward with this. Because on, on one end, you're thinking, I'm happy and I want to explore this with you because you make me happy. But then on the other end, you're like, Oh my gosh, like, do you know what I mean? Like, what does this mean? Like, does this feel right? How was, how was that? How was navigating that for you? Um, it was difficult because like this, listen, me and Steph were the first to say morally, yeah. was it the correct thing to do? Yeah. No, we, we both know that. Yeah. We're not them, that sort of people where it's like, oh yeah, like we, we yeah. were so in love and like, it doesn't matter or whatever. It, it did. And yeah. I understand why someone would be hurt about yeah. that yeah. at the end of the day. Um, However, mm. I know what I had to deal with in the relationship yeah. before. Mm -hmm. And I was not willing to miss out on something that I knew it could be for him. 
if that makes sense. Yeah. I weren't willing to do that. Yeah. Because it was just like, I felt like I had sacrificed and done so much for him already to kind of not get, I don't know. I, I, I feel like it's I feel like you're hard. there though, you're there. You are there. I'm not trying to vilify anyone. Yeah, yeah. Because the bottom line is, it's been four years since it all happened. Oh my God, it's been that long. Well, the internet, oh the internet found out about it three years ago. Yeah. But it, he knew before. Mm. The internet talks a lot. Of, they talk more about it than, it than we ever have. That's the truth about it. Everyone has sort of moved on, even if we're not best friends and even if we're not happy about the situation. Everyone, it, it doesn't come up. Yeah. Ever. It's like not a thing anymore. Because mm. everyone does what is best for Bubby. Mm. How, because I know from watching, you know, your online the things that you do share online, um, you can see the impact that Steph has had on your life. And, you know, I think for me anyway, from watching your content and watching how you progress from the, the Jade that was pregnant, the Jade that gave birth, the Jade that was dealing with the eating disorder, the Jade that is now trying to work out of the gym and get the best body that she can. Yeah. And she's trying to eat well, do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, it's been beautiful to watch that progression, Thank right? You. And I know that it must have been hard at that time where so many people had so many opinions of you, of your love, regardless of like, you know, what that love meant for you and like what that relationship that you were building with Steph meant for you. How was it kind of reading those things about yourself that you knew innately might not have been th true to like the actual story? How, how was it kind of absorbing that? And what did you, how did you navigate that aspect? Uh, it was shit, but I found, what I found more hard is people trying to vilify Steph. That's what I found more hard to mm. see and to watch over, seeing what people had to say about me. Mm -hmm. I can handle being called a slag and being called this and being called that. It's like, it's whatever. Yeah. Um, but because I know his heart, that was hard for me. And the thing is, it's, it's difficult because I understand what it How would they look like. Them. Yeah, 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 yeah from the outside, because if it was another two people in the situation and it weren't me in the situation, maybe I'd be thinking as well, like, rah, mm. how did that happen? Like, what happened there? But because it's me, I, I understand the situation. Um, but yeah, that it was really, really hard mm -hmm. to, to deal with. Yeah. Um, because people can't feel what we're feeling. Yeah. They don't understand our relationship the way that we understand our relationship. Or the benefits that you both gain from the relationships. Yeah. Like people aren't gonna understand that you can never understand what happens between between two people. But I think that people thought it was like a fling. Like it was like I would never have made such a big decision for a fling. Ever. Mm. And neither would he. What was that feeling that you guys kind of felt? for each other? It was more of a bond. Like we had bonded over certain things, mm. um, especially with like my eating issues and things like that. He obviously is a chef and he was the first person to recognize in me, like you're gonna literally die soon. He was the first person to recognize that the o like the only person to put food in front of my face, even if I weren't going to eat it. But he just wanted to put it in front of my face to see if I would. Mm -hmm. As I said to you, I don't like that he has been vilified because he is like the best person ever. He's like done. He's just he makes me so happy and like secure in myself and like makes me believe that I can do anything and wants the best for me. And I can feel that he wants the best for me. It's yeah. not like someone saying, oh yeah, like I want the best yeah. for you. And then you know that low key, they actually like don't really give a <laughs> shit. Yeah. yeah. And I have felt that from past partners yeah. where they, they say they want the best for you, but deep down inside, they, they don't. Mm. I feel from him mm. that he wants the absolute best for me. Being, and I don't know if you've thought about this, I'm sure you have, um, but considering like what you experience at home, 
um, and then going to school and people making fun of your size and then you experiencing like the eating disorder and that kind of being like a progressive thing throughout your adult life. Having someone who be the first person to really recognize that in yourself without you having to like, you know, sometimes when you explain yourself too much, you can just feel overbearing that you're just like, oh my God, like I just want someone to see me, you know, like really see me without me having to express anything. Mm -hmm. What did that feeling feel like for you? Having someone in your corner who just saw you, who just saw everything from the eating disorder, from the effect of that, from the from the, the mental strain that mental, that would have put on your life. How did what did that feel like for you? I guess I felt seen. I think because for some reason when I'm going through something, I tend to take it out on myself. Um, I tend to punish myself, whether that be I don't self harm anymore, but that was my. That was my thing before. When I stopped self-harming, the way I'd stop self-harming was I would, (laughs) this is fucking insane to say, I would pluck hairs on me to feel pain. But at least I weren't like causing damage, you know, but I still wanted to feel pain. And then I guess with the eating thing, it's not like I wanted to cause pain to myself, Mm -hmm. but I guess... I guess I just ended up punishing myself for, mm. for whatever reason. So I guess I felt seen and like someone had noticed how much I was hurting. Mm. And that's been like the thing that you felt like has almost just marks, is it mark? I mean, is that the right way of phrasing it? Almost just kind of allowed you to not allow the outside noise to kind of minimize like the relationship that you guys can and have built they don't know like anything yeah that's what another reason why i've kept like a lot of our relationship private Mm. as well because it's just like i am so happy that i literally just don't even want any sort of and it doesn't matter what anyone could say i've i've heard it all Mm. we've both heard it all Mm. don't care What's your relationship? Because I know how much love you have from your do- for your daughter and how much she has transformed your life. You read it in your captions. You, by the way, you're sick with your words. I cannot lie to you. You're so good with your words. Thank you. Sometimes I read some of the things you're putting out and I'm like, girl. What? Oh, but yeah, thanks. Um, and I know your, your love for your daughter. How has that... What is your relationship like with Mike now? Three years on. Very civil for Bubby. Mm. But... If we didn't have a child, would we ever speak to each other? Mm. No. We would never speak to each other again. Yeah. Like, we would have no reason to speak to each other. Mm. But we have a shared a shared responsibility. Yeah. That no matter what, till the day me and him die, we've got this responsibility. We are Ayla's parents. If she decides to get married one day, it will be me and you there. Mm. If she decides to go uni, me and you there at the graduation. Yeah. Somehow we've got to just be civil. Mm. Are we just going to be angry forever? I, I'm not, I can't be angry with the shit that he done forever. Yeah. It would drain my life. Yeah. I just, I cannot. And I wouldn't expect him to be angry forever either. Like at some point people have to move on with their life. Do you know what I mean? Um, but Ayla and Michael have a brilliant relationship. They have a really good relationship and I'd never, ever get in between it. Mm. I think you, you're so interesting because as you're talking, I'm just like picking apart like so many things, right? And it has me thinking to not just like Jade as a child, but just Jade as a person. I think when you think about, you know, the, our first idea of love, um, our first, the, the first place that we kind of form, you know, our perception of love is usually in our home environment and what that gives us. And I know for me, my first idea of love is not the greatest in the same way that yours isn't the greatest, right? And I think... You know, when it was your best friend's birthday the other day, reading some of the things you had to say about her, um, the way that you describe your love for Steph, the way that you describe your love for Ayla, even your mum and your brother, I think that there's been a big, and this is coming from someone who is, who just loves to analyse a lot of things, you know. So I think there's been like a huge realisation on how you want to love and the kind of love that you want to send out into the world. Am I right in saying so? And if so, what is that for you? You are right in saying that. Yeah. I'm like massive on love and and keeping those that mean so much to me around me and making sure that they're happy and like family is absolutely everything to me. Because 
I've learned that one thing about the internet is people, they'll switch up at any point, you know? Oh, absolutely. They'll switch up at any point. One day they hate you, one day they love you, and they might end up loving you again, and they might end up hating you again. It takes one thing for them. It takes one thing. But with your family, my mum, with Stefan, with whoever, Georgina, I can fuck up. And they will understand me and allow me to fix whatever I've fucked up on. Mm. They don't just say, well, okay, I'm, I'm subscribing for your, from your life now. From your channel. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm done, like you're canceled. <laughs> like I'm allowed to be who I am. Yeah. And that's, that's why it's important to me because through the bullshit, mm. it's them, it's them. Do you feel like that's something that you want to bring across to your online, perso- not necessarily even persona, because I don't even think, I don't really feel that for me. I don't feel like a, a a proper, you know, there's some people who really think like super, super intensively to like the message I'm putting out, this is what I'm doing. Da, da, da. I feel like you with you, it's all about what you feel in that moment and you know, yeah. the energy that you want to radiate, but is love and like your, your new profound way of looking at love and life, something that you also want to integrate to, you know, your online persona um see i've always had like a bit of a battle with this one especially Mm. since the whole steph situation yeah because i feel like i used to share a lot more of my family before um i definitely used to share a lot more about them and i feel like since that situation Mm. i don't share as much because it seems to give people just a reason to talk Mm -hmm. and to just feel like they know you Mm. when they don't actually Know. know you but my family is crazy we're all like very wild and like part of me is just like I want to share that mm. even when we're arguing like even when we're like the happiest and we're dancing about like I would love to share all of that mm. but at the same time it's so precious to me that I get worried to Keep because there's so much in my life that has been precious and I've shared it And then people on the internet let me know why I should not have shared that. Whether that be my pregnancy, Mm. whether that be Ayla. I used Mm. to post her more. I don't. Yeah, you do. Not anymore, really. Because people are mad. Mm. Like people are so mad and, and judge everything. And it could be as simple as like, how come you let her wear boys clothes? And it's like, she's five. I don't mm. know if you're aware. Like, it's just very, and then I just get a bit like, no, not not my bubby. You're not going to do, you do it to me. You're not going to do this to my baby. Mm. Tell me about Ayla. How has having her changed you? Like, your face, the mask, you know, you're like, <laughs> how, is, how has she changed you? Or how has she evolved you? It's a better way of asking that. Do you know what? She's made me a better person. Mm. I want to be the best version of myself Mm. because of her. I feel like before having her, I was very, um, I'm not sure what the word is, but I, I didn't really think a lot. I would just do. Mm -hmm. Whereas now that I have her, I think about everything a lot. I think about everything that I'm doing a lot, Mm. who's in my life who, yeah, I don't know. She, she's, she's shaped me completely mm. and made me a much better person. Not that I was a bad person yeah, before, but just, I wasn't. But, growing. Um, but I'm very sensitive now because of her. Really? I cry at everything, anything emotional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I really wanna like, even with like my eating issues and stuff, mm-hmm. She's one of the main reasons why I even want to like get my life and like um, help myself with that situation yeah. because I want to see her do good things and I want to see her grow into an adult. Like mm. I don't want her to be without her mum, mm. and this world is so scary and I don't want her to be left without me to navigate on her own. Even though she's got loads of family, loads of love around her. It's, she is so loved, it's insane. It's ridiculous, but she needs her mama, mm. and I want to be around for that. And I want to, yeah, see her experience things, and I want to guide her. 
Where are you with the eating disorder now? I'm getting better. Mm-hmm. It's not. A, it's not an. I eat. Yeah. Like I haven't for months gone along. To, so before I would go weeks without eating. At all. Yeah. Nothing. In a day. Like yeah, in a day. Like sometimes like, maybe I would have like a packet of Haribo's or some shit, but I weren't eating at all. I don't even know how skinny I got. One day, when I'm, when I've been able to gain the weight or whatever, one day I'll share the pictures and people won't even believe how ill I was. They won't believe it because I hid it well. But I was very, 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 very sick. Because there were certain pictures that you did share, and if it's worse than this, but there were certain pictures that you did share where, like, you was, you spoke about it, and you were like, "Look at my neck." Oh yeah, though I have, arm. I have worse. I have like oh. full body pictures where, like, yeah, you can see everything. I was very ill, but now I eat like a normal person. Mm-hmm. However, I do struggle with something called PMDD, which is a very severe version of PMS. Mm-hmm. So a week before my period, I am depressed, anxious, suicidal, but I know it's not me. Yeah, I know that it's my body's being taken over by, yeah. by something. And I know that once that week's done, I'm very much myself again. But that is the week that I struggle with. And it's something that I'm trying to help myself with. I've been getting like IV drips and taking vitamins and Mm -hmm. things like that. There's certain things that you can do other than taking antidepressants that will help with PMDD. So I'm just trying to go through like the natural route right now. Mm -hmm. Um, But that is what really messes up my journey. Because Mm -hmm. when I'm not suffering, I can gym, I can eat, I can do all of this. And then when I am suffering... I can't seem to have an appetite. I can't seem to gym. I j- it just gets fucked. But to have that like once a month. Oh, babe, it like, it's, it's like, like you I have progress it. and then. Yeah, I have it. I deal with it. Yeah. And then the rest of the month, I'm picking up the pieces. It's hell. It's awful. I absolutely hate it. <laughs> and I wish there was, I'm going to raise more awareness on it. There's yeah. going to be one day where I sit down and have a video because PMDD is not a thing that people yeah. know about. You were the first one like, that meant, like, I've ever heard about it. I was the first one I ever heard about it. Yeah, but when I was speaking to people about it, like on Snap and I was just sharing, the amount of people that came forward and then I went to doctors and they were like, yeah, it sounds like... Mm. Because the way, it can, the way I can switch, it's insane. Mm. From the, the, the version of you that's like healed and good and, and to this... Yeah. What, what is what? How would you describe that, if you can? How would you describe that complete separation? Like, are you able to? Because you know, sometimes yeah, when like you feel like there's like a voice in your ear, um, or okay, when you've done something wrong in life and you're like, you can almost kind of hear yourself say, "Ah, oh, Jade or Wumi, like you're, this isn't right." Da da da. Is it almost like? Is it almost like the you that you are in, when you're being like genuine Jade and this Jade in control is almost watching over this other version of you that you almost can't control and you're just kind of waiting for it to end. Yeah, that, that is literally how I feel every single month. So like I, I, I say to my family all the time, and when I say family, I always include Steph in that. Like yeah. Steph is my family. Yeah. But I say to my family all the time, like I physically feel something controlling me. Like it, I feel chained. I can't get out of it until it's ready to leave. I just feel really trapped. I do, yeah, I do definitely feel like this is something that deserves to be, like, shared so much more. I think um, I watched your Instagram stories maybe, like, two weeks ago. I think you, you spoke on it a little bit. Mm, yeah. Just about, like, the progression of, like, going to the gym and working hard and uh, and that being, like, amazing for you. And then to, like... Lose everything. Lose that again. And my metabolism so far is I can lose weight. Mm. Like, I can skip a meal and I can, like, literally see that weight shift off of me. But, yeah... When I spoke about it a couple of weeks ago, I shared it because I just wanted people to like know that it's not a, a smooth sailing journey for me as well. Because I think yeah. people see in my Snapchat, they're like, how do you have the motivation for the gym? Like, how do you do this? And how do you do that? And I'm literally like, here's an example mm. of like how how it's not what you think it, it is. is. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird because as much as um, you have this it's like the prog- the progress is there and you're evolving and then you kind of get slammed, right? It's weird that even with that going on in your life, I can still feel like such a massive, almost like just a massive transition in you, in you, like when we're talking about, you know, the online space anyway, mainly for me anyway, I just think that you are just like growing into like, just the truest 
version of you right now that's kind of what it feels like more where it, even through the darkness even through the moments where you feel like you know you're being held back from you know this 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 disorder on a monthly basis it feels like that the fight feels more or the fight feels so much more intentional yeah because i don't know why it is and that is true about me i do yeah. find that that the older i get yeah the more i just want to be better mm. i really have a fear of get into my deathbed and just having bare regret mm. because i speak to older people all the time i regret this i wish this i wish that and i don't want to get to that point of my life where it's like i'm nearly done here and i regret so much i just want to smash life and even if things keep pulling me down and even if like the odds are against me or whatever i will still try mm. how would you describe the jade that you are now as a person if you could completely describe her and what she is about how would you describe her i feel like all i care about is happiness i feel like i don't care a lot about what people think should make me happy cuz even like last year i took a lot of social media breaks mm. more than i ever have in like my career and stuff and like when i decided to do it it was like a lot of oh like i'm going to lose followers i'm going to lose it. and i did lose just tons tons of them thousands but then it started happening and i was like do you know what i actually don't care mm. i'm happy i'm like happy in like life in like my life and like who I'm becoming and I'm excited because I just get better every year. Now I don't mean looks wise or anything like that. I mean growing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> But overall as a person I just I become who I imagine myself being. Who is that? I always imagined myself to be this person that like has our shit together. like goes to the gym yeah. and like you know does a little bit of work after the gym yeah. and then like picks up her kid from school and blah, 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 and just like organized and and just doing making good decisions for myself mm. um drinking 2 liters of water a day <laughs> thing, just doing like good things for myself mm. um and I, because I want to be that person before it used to scare me because I seemed really far away from that person. Yeah. It seemed like I haven't gymmed in ages. I don't drink any water. Mm. I barely eat. Like how am I going to be that person? And it would overwhelm me mm. and make me think and make me not do anything. Yeah. It made me like really procrastinate because it's like how do I become that person? That person. Mm. But now I just take it like day by day like what can I do for myself today okay. that's going to get me to that person? Mm. And I'm a, a perfectionist. And a lot of the time when you're a perfectionist, you're a procrastinator, mm. procrastinator, sorry. Mm. Because you almost think if it's not going to be perfect, there's no point of doing it. Mm. Um and that was like the case with like the gym and stuff. I didn't want to do it because I know I wouldn't do it perfectly. And it was felt embarrassing to me. Like what if people are looking at me and like that uh, one of my things is what if they're looking at me and thinking why is she here? Like she don't need to lose any more weight. Like that was like what i thought mm. but one day i just went and yeah i wasn't very strong i could barely do anything i was very very weak it's fine but at the same time every single time i went i got better yeah and it's led me to where i am now i mm. can bang some weights now <laughs> ah, i swear to god i can bang some weights now <laughs> I'll see you and your mum at the gym in the morning. I'm like, "Oh, I love it." I, I swear. I freaking love it. you drag her to the gym with you. It's, yeah, it's I lovely. do. Yeah, because, you know, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. And yeah. my mum looks fabulous for her age. I'm yeah. not going to say it because she would honestly kill me. I'm I'm sure one day she'll allow me to, but she looks amazing for her age. Yeah. Um but girl, get your ass in the gym and you yeah. can like work on keep, things. Yeah, keep yeah. that up. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I feel like this has been such a great conversation. I feel like I really the the Jay that I felt online, it was like even the, the better version of that. Thank you. Yeah. Obviously, 
Like it's a hard one, isn't yeah. it? Because there's so much more like I can say on on each topic and mm-hmm. each situation. But it's I'm just trying to navigate how well, the best ways to do it yeah. because people aren't they don't receive things the wow. same. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think you've done really well though. But yeah, I think considering like you, this isn't I've never ever heard you speak speak so openly on certain topics, whether it's you know you and Steph or even just your eating disorder, your mental health as a child. Like there's, there's just been so much that I never knew the depth of it you know so I think even giving yourself grace in in accepting that you know yeah that like you're evolving and I think in a year or two years time the way you speak on even certain topics will be completely different well I say completely but we can revisit we can revisit revisit in in like a year and I'll be like Jade pull up on my sofa yeah exactly how have you found the conversation I found the conversation good I like I've liked it yeah I feel comfortable with you you're a great vibe thank you Yeah. yeah thank you for coming of course thank you so much for having me I appreciate you Thanks, guys.